Hi, welcome. This series is all about plectrum rudiments for guitar. We're going to be focusing on how to achieve good technique, how to maintain your technique, and how to use the plectrum accurately and consistently. Now, the guitar has only existed as a soloist instrument, as a melodic instrument, for a relatively short amount of time. Because of that, there's an enormous amount of mystery and misinformation which surrounds the process of achieving good, consistent technique. If you are learning to play the piano or the violin, there's an extremely well-established system for teaching you how to achieve good, consistent, accurate technique. Not so with the guitar. There are hundreds and hundreds of philosophies out there and unfortunately most of them will not result in you becoming a cleaner or more accurate player. Something that you may have noticed is that the average drummer possesses a vastly higher level of technical facility than the average guitarist. And one of the main reasons for that is because of the way that they practice. Guitarists tend to focus on large concepts, an entire song, an entire solo, an entire melodic line or lick. They try and learn the whole thing at once and often they fail, often they're unable to pull it off cleanly and consistently and then they get very frustrated. Drummers take a completely different approach. They break everything down into small chunks, rudiments. They master each rudiment one at a time and then they piece everything together and create a much larger, more complicated line or solo idea or beat or groove or whatever. So I want to train you to think a little bit more like a drummer in the way that you practice. And the benefits of this will be enormous. Every aspect of your playing will improve. You'll be cleaner, faster, smoother, more consistent. You'll have better control. You'll have a better understanding of rhythm, of how to play with other musicians. Everything will improve. Let's talk about basic posture. It's vitally important to keep the height of your instrument consistent while you practice. So if you're using an electric guitar, always practice using a strap. If you're using an acoustic guitar, always practice using a footstool. That way, when you make the transition from your practice room to a live performance environment, the height of your instrument and the posture of your hands remains consistent. This will give you much greater control over your instrument. Let's talk about how to hold the plectrum. The best way to hold the plectrum is between the first digit of your index finger and the digit of your thumb. This allows you precise control over the amount of pressure being exerted on the plectrum. Vitally important, I can't stress this enough. You need to be able to control the amount of pressure that you're exerting at all times. At lower tempos you may be exerting more pressure, at medium tempos you may be exerting less pressure, at high tempos you may once again be exerting a lot of pressure to keep the plectrum in place, to keep it from moving around too much. Once you have your grip in place, you can insert the plectrum, like so. It's very important not to hold the pick too far back, because then it can flop around a lot. You don't want that. It's also very important not to hold it too close to the tip, because then it can't move or flex at all. Let's talk about what not to do. There are two great evils of plectrum usage that I'd like to focus on. Flexing and scooping. Flexing is basically it's something that you'll see a lot of guys do, especially when they're trying to play fast. They're kind of flexing their whole hand, they're moving their index finger about, they're flicking their thumb like this. You don't want to do that, you want to avoid it altogether, because then you're limited to how fast can you flick your thumb. Not very fast. You want all of your movement to come from your elbow and your wrist. None of the movement, regardless of what tempo you're playing at, none of the movement should be coming from the fingers in your hand. You want these to be a rigid unit. The posture of your hand needs to stay completely consistent while you're picking. All of the movement is coming from the elbow and the wrist. Scooping. What I want you to do here is to imagine an invisible line just above the strings. Now, the tip of the plectrum always needs to remain underneath that line. So what you'll see a lot of guys do, I'm going to exaggerate here slightly so that you can see what I'm talking about. What a lot of guys do is they start up here, they sort of scoop down to hit the string, and then they come back up again. This is an enormous waste of movement. You don't want to do that. It's a complete waste of time. There's no reason to do it. You want the plectrum trajectory to remain completely flat as flat as you can possibly get it. So you want the tip of the pick to start on the one side of the string, 
pass over the string and return to the other side. Imagine that invisible line. Always keep the tip of the pick below the line. No scooping and no flexing, no flicking your thumb, no moving your index finger about. You've got two axes of movement to worry about, your elbow and your wrist. That's enough. If you're introducing further axes of movement into the process, you're creating room for all kinds of inconsistencies. It's too much to keep track of. And above all, it's unnecessary movement. It's not energy efficient. It's just wasting your time. I'd also like to talk about tension, the amount of tension that you carry in your arm while you're practicing. Obviously you need a little bit of tension so that your arm stays rigid enough so that it's not flopping around. Anything more than that is too much. If you have a whole lot of tension in your arm, in your elbow, in your wrist while you're practicing, it means that you're playing whatever exercise you're working on, it means that you're playing it too fast. You need to back your metronome off, always practice with a metronome. Always practice with a metronome. If you're not, you're wasting your time. Back your metronome off, slow down to the point where you can play the line, or the exercise, whatever it is that you're focusing on, without any tension in your elbow, in your wrist. It should be a smooth movement. It should feel effortless. That way, when you master it at a low tempo and you start to speed it up, you can keep that feeling of no tension, of zero tension. You can keep it consistent, you can stay loose. Otherwise, if you're in a performance situation, there's adrenaline pumping, you're trying to play something really fast, your arm is going to lock up, your wrist is going to lock up, you're not going to be able to pull it off. I can't stress this enough. You need to keep your arm structure as free of tension as you possibly can. And the way to do that is by practicing everything at very low tempos to start off with, getting completely comfortable, programming your hand, your wrist, your elbow, programming the muscle memory. Your body is like a computer, it responds to programming. You need to program it accurately at a low tempo and then move up consistently. If you're increasing the tension too much when you increase the tempo, it means you're upping the tempo too quickly. You need to back it off, slow down, and be patient. Good technique doesn't happen overnight. All of this stuff takes time. You need to be patient. You need to be patient with your body and with yourself. You need to give your body time to adjust to what you're asking it to do. This is very precise stuff that we're talking about. These are tiny movements which we're trying to master and use and control with consistency and accuracy. It doesn't happen overnight. You need to give yourself time. The only way to do it is to practice slowly, consistently, using a metronome, focusing on your hand posture, focusing on not flexing and not scooping, and not creating too much tension in your arm structure. There's a great saying which I always like to drum into my students' heads. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. You need to practice everything perfectly. If you don't practice it perfectly at a low tempo, how can you expect to speed it up and maintain your consistency, especially in a live environment where there's all kinds of other factors. You know, you've got dodgy sound, you've got the audience, you've got adrenaline, worrying about keeping your tone together, all of that stuff. The last thing that you want is some sort of mechanical inconsistency with your hands because you didn't practice in the right way. I see this kind of thing all the time. Guys playing the same lines over and over again, too fast, making a lot of mistakes, a lot of sloppiness, a lot of inconsistency. And it's like they're not even hearing it. You have to take control of that situation. You need to slow it down, simplify, break everything into small blocks. Focus on one little element at a time, one rudiment at a time. Master it, speed it up, gain control over it. And then you add your rudiments together to make larger concepts, to make it more complex. The only way that you can play complicated ideas consistently and in a musical way, this is what we're talking about here. We're not talking about being the fastest guitarist on the planet. That's been done. It's a pointless pursuit. We're talking here about musicality, accuracy, projection, tone, consistency. That's what we're after here. So, complexity and the ability to control complicated ideas and concepts and lines and rhythms all comes from mastering the rudiments and being able to play the simple stuff 
consistently and perfectly. I know this might sound like a lot to take in and a lot of negativity, but actually it's a very positive thing. It's never too late to unlearn and undo poor technique and poor practicing habits. All you have to do is be willing.